Jeff Davis is on the board. Scott Henson is on the board. Chris Stewart, uh, town planner. And our two alternates who will come back out all the time. Okay. Uh, consent agenda and minutes. You all have a chance to review. Yeah. Any comments on the professional minutes? There is um, nothing in here about the fact that I abstain. Okay. If you make a note of that, Lance. Any other corrections? No. How about the agenda? Are we happy with the agenda? Yes. Okay. If so, I'll make a motion to approve both as amended. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda and the meeting agenda as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes, it's 5 0. Okay. Item 4. Uh, conduct a public hearing on case. Uh, RZ02-19. Chris, you're going to present? Yes. Uh, our case RZ0219 is a resounding application for plus or minus 6.71 acres, address 3683, 3685, and 3687 Oak Ridge Road at the approximate intersection of Interstate 73 Oak Ridge Road and Fort Road. The application is to change the zoning from AG Agricultural for one parcel and from uh, RS40 to CUGD for the other two parcels. So, say that differently, the application has changed the existing zoning for the three parcels to conditional use general business district. As I said, the, the approximate intersection of these parcels is at Brook Lake Road, Oak Ridge Road, and 973 to the west. Um, if you look at the map on the projector over there, you'll see that these three parcels are bounded on the west, north, and east by a single large tract of property that's in single ownership that's currently existed, or excuse me, uh, currently zoned commercial or you know, conditional use general business. Um, to the south, there are some parcels that are zoned limited office, CU conditional use R40 single family residential, and, and general R40. The, the standard one. Um, the large track surrounding three parcels at this point, they didn't then develop. Um, to the south, there's some development, both residential and some of the commercial stuff. Part of this application, um, in, in, in keeping with the other previous zones, for the parcels at this site is um, a list of prohibited uses. Uh, the general business district has a long list of uses that are uh, generally applied throughout that district, but in this um, rezoning case and the previous rezones from the other parcels out here, there were a series of uses that were prohibited um, or if you will limited, so not allowed when they normally would be up on the projector the long list of that. And it was included in your meeting packet as well. And if you're familiar with the other rezoning cases from years back, um, it's quite a long list. It includes uh, junkyards for motor vehicles, landfill, taxi terminal, uh, boat sales, some adult uh, uses, quick repair, boat repair, live entertainment. Um, and this list of uses that is not going to be allowed with these three parcels the same as the list for the other ones. Additionally, there are development conditions that came with this uh, application. I asked for them to be put on the application um, so that they would match the other zone, uh, in the zone for the parcels around it. So it's consistent across all the parcels um, would be done. Uh, and um, some of the highlights here is that the, these 6.71 acres, once they're rezoned, if that's the way this case goes tonight, uh, in, in future action, there will be an updated master site plan that would essentially need to redraw this boundary. Actually, I got the other um, image here. So on this image here, this drawing, these are the three parcels, and this is the area that was previously approved for the master site, uh, sketch plan. And the updated master plan for this rezoning would include just basically removing these lines and drawing one across here and having that replied to show this one parcel. Um, the, uh, the applicant has stated that down the road there would be a village type of shopping area development. Um, would include several retail buildings, commercial buildings, and medical office buildings, and some out parcels for future development. 
Um, however, you know, at this point, we're talking about zoning and changing use. We're not talking about what that future development may be, what it may look like. And that's far too future for us to really consider what that may be and how that may affect this case. This is merely to consider changing the lot of uses on the site. And the applicant made, a, made an application, and it was complete. I had all the necessary paperwork to verify the ownership, the existing zoning, surrounding zoning. Uh, they included the environmental inventory report, um, which was quite detailed and comprehensive. The, uh, the total area out here, uh, once considered these three parcels, will be plus or minus 86 acres. These, these three parcels are 6.71 acres, and what's previously out there, um, or what exists out there, is 79 acres. Um, this, the, the, the general business district is primarily intended to accommodate a wide range of uses. Um, typically along thoroughfares and areas that have developed with minimal front setbacks. This location is also within the Oak Ridge Road NC-150 scenic corridor, and that corridor has additional uh, development standards that would apply to this track too. This is entirely within that district. So those things would look at regulating um, the materials, um, access parking, design, things like that. And I think you're all familiar with what those are. So um, I looked at and analyzed this or reviewed the matter as in keeping with consistency with comprehensive plan. And I find that in, in several, many ways even, it comports with the comprehensive plan to in my report, the things I spoke to specifically regarding appropriate limited commercial development. So that's the type of limited uses that would be allowed. Um, it also talks about community character and preservation that we can ask for and, and work with develop developers to have a greater setbacks than we're required to improve land safety buffers so that the adjoining uh, adjacent uses that are not the same will have a barrier between whatever use goes on there and the existing uses. Um, this is a rather wooded lot, and I'm saying just based on geographic conditions, a lot of those trees will remain intact at the end of the development. Um, we'll see how that goes. The specific constraints will ultimately inform how that works out, but it's going to be requested that we maintain and limit the spare as much as possible, just the areas needed for the projects, whatever those may be. At this site, it will mean that, um, well, there's a lot of other things such as the sidewalk and the uh, pedestrian and bicycle facilities, the trail networks, there's a tunnel nearby that there's a possibility at one point in the future to develop some kind of corridor where you might tie that into another proposed trailway so it ties in with that point of the comprehensive plan. Transportation improvements would be such that the internal circulation of the site is sufficient to meet the needs of the site but also not to impact your surrounding area. And that's really important too. We don't want a lot of overflow traffic, the backup traffic, and things that are really um, too much more impactful than what we're used to. Well, it takes some coordination and work, and of course, NCDOT is going to have a um, good role in developing our future plan. Also, related to this is the appropriate housing residential development. So, uh, another one we're talking about um, the scale, scope, and the type of uses, but also the location of the use. So, I noted that this development site and these three parcels are out of the intersection of Oak Ridge Road and Brookbank Road, and I 73 to the west and uh, Devo Road to the east. And as a specter removed from most residential development, that's an appropriate location on a major thoroughfare and, of course, another minor thoroughfare over the road. Uh, because it is part of the scenic corridor, we'll make sure that we get uh, whatever development may occur there, business and otherwise uh, commercial, uh, will be in keeping with the architectural standards that we come to see in the here in Summerfield. So as I said, the building materials, um, scale, uh, landscaping access, all those types of things that help for smooth flow um, in and around the site. So that's pretty much the end of my report. The request uh, appears to have the overall consistency of the town's comprehensive plan. And the request is the requirements of the development ordinance and staff recommend approval of the rezoning case 02-19. For the zoning board, considering the decision either to approve or to not uh, deny, of course, that conditional approval is also per, uh, permitted, uh, you need to indicate two things separate. One, consistency with the plan, and two, uh, that it would be or not be in the public interest. And examples of what those might be are on the report sheet, you know, uh, recall them by amendment. So with that, 
mention that question to me at this time, but I think it's better for us to allow the applicant to present their case. Before you go, does anyone have any questions at first?
being able to interconnect the roads internally without having external curb cuts is very desirable. So if you're going to do a good land use plan, you really need to take the donut hole out of the equation. It needs to be thought about and planned together. It makes a lot of sense for uh, this needs to be the same thing with the remaining 79 acres all around it currently is. It allows us an opportunity to plan the property better. I think it's a better visual uh, from Oak Ridge Road, less curb cuts, uh, and a much better way to comprehensively plan a large tract of land that is predominantly already zoned what we're asking for. Uh, in a brief summary, I want to hit a few points on this. Uh, the proposal is for zoning 6.71 acres to the CUGB. The 79 acres of this tract is already zoned, so everything around it is zoned correctly. Uh, we're submitting the same conditions and the same uses as previously approved on the surrounding tract. We're not proposing to change, proposing any change in the comprehensive plan at all. Uh, presenting this tract will allow the internal circulation, like I mentioned, fewer curb cuts to occur and allow us to create a better product uh, for, for the community as well as the comprehensive master plan development. Uh, planning staff has recommended approval of this rezoning and part of the, the questions that came out of the neighborhood drop-in session was like sidewalks like you mentioned that's the next phase so one of the seven conditions attached to the zoning says we will be coming back with an illustrative plan that covers all of the sidewalks the interconnectivity roads and the other good planning principles that you expect in the summer and that will be and that's in the conditions tied to the same uh, if you recommend approval for that. And we're happy to answer any questions that we might have at the appropriate time. Thank you. Uh, So, with that, if someone wants to speak uh, for the 
and rezoning. Uh, and with the board will allow uh, prevents for each paper. Uh, I'm Jim Gerdich and I'm here representing the developer and I just wanted to make a couple of comments to Ms. Whitaker's questions uh, at the neighborhood meeting that, you know, just to let you know we we're listening. There are some questions from the neighbors about improving the buffer along uh, Oak Ridge Road, you know, when the time comes, you know, adding some more trees and streetscape there that kind of help shield. And there was also concern about Brookbank intersection. Uh, you know, some of the traffic and, you know, we've had some preliminary conversations with NCDOT, you know, it's just very preliminary with line drawings now to try and, you know, work within the right of way that exists there now and just try to help with the looking over your left shoulder turn. So, I just wanted to let you know that you know, we were there and we were listening. So, uh, and I'm assuming that there will be an updated traffic study required before we move forward. The actual site on site plan? Well, traffic impact analysis or a traffic impact study, uh, or statement rather, will be required uh, as part of the development in each phase. Uh, so that NCDOT will be involved in building. Yes, there will be traffic studies you know, submitted with each phase. This, this parcel here is only a small part, like 10% of the total parcel. So. Uh, right. Anyone else I'd like to speak in favor? Uh, anyone want to speak in opposition to this poetry zone? Then uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> okay. Discussion on the board.